Do you understand? Yes. <laughs> I wish I had a ham sandwich to calm my nerves. Get a hold of yourself, Dag. How come I suddenly know which boy dance rock out loud? <laughs> hey, it's Brian. I'm Rob. And with Hard Powers Combined, we are the Nostalgic Dads Podcast. That's right. Coming together to fight the corona. Deal with it. Yeah. I have no toilet paper, I have no hand sanitizer, and we're running low on baby wipes, but that's besides the point. Well, we're, we're stocked up here, but we didn't, like, we have a little more than normal, but not, like, we weren't trying to be those people who are just taking everything. Well, you don't want to be end of the world, underground bunker, toilet paper thieves? No, no. It, it, when in doubt, there's always water. Just wash, just wash your butt. <laughs> Hey, that could be the next thing to go, man. It could the virus could be in the water system next. Well, then I'll I'll die in a dirty diaper, in a dirty adult diaper. That works. I guess. My wife's in the other room and she gave me a courtesy laugh. I actually heard it. I I did hear it, so (laughs) Um (laughs) Anywho, what are we doing today? uh, enough of that talk. We are discussing season one of But Ugly Martians. Who, do you know how many seasons there are? I did not look that up. So it was a little confusing because one site says it's all one season, um, 26 episodes, and then another site said it was three seasons. Okay. So we're going by the judgment that it's three seasons because we did episode one, episode seven, and episode, I uh, don't know, 12, 16, something. I didn't write down the last episode number. <laughs> okay. I think it's 12. Okay, before we start this, can I just say who approved this name? I don't know. No, um, it's funny because I think the Martians have the best look to them compared to the human characters. I was going to say that. I would say the humans' models are not good looking. They're not Angela Anaconda bad, but they are very, um, you know, hillbilly in the woods kind of. I'll eat your face if I have to. Hmm. They're, uh, they're very, they're very weird looking. Okay, I have to ask, have you ever seen a movie called Food Fight? No. Okay. This was a movie in the early 2000s. It was an it was a movie or like a computer animated movie about um <clears throat> pretty much like famous icons of like cereals and like other grocery store products come to life. And yeah, yeah and the animation in that movie looks just like this, like the character I do models. Remember- Do you remember hearing about that movie? I've I've never seen it, and I've heard it's horrible. It's pretty bad, and it's just one of those things that you got to one day experience for yourself and just be like, wow, someone did this. And there's big names in it, and it's really weird. So here's the thing. Would you rather watch that again, or would you rather watch Seth Rogen's animated movie, Sausage Party? Because they're both horrible for different reasons. Having seen both, I would say probably Seth Rogen's because there are there is some semblance of comedy written into that versus food fights. There, it's ugly and the script is like they don't know what they're doing. Yeah, from what I heard with food fights, it's pretty much just you know, hey, buy my product. Yeah, exactly. Hey, I'm, I'm the mascot for this product. Buy it. Like, hey, here's Mr. Clean. He's not. I mean, he's not actually doing anything, but he's in here. Yeah, it sounds like a weird movie. All right, I, I guess it's, we're doing the our usual. We do um, three episodes of a season to just get a good cro- cross reference, and uh, we do an episode one, episode seven, and episode thirteen. Yeah, thirteen. I was one off. No, no. It's been a long, been a long day. Yeah, fighting that, fighting that virus. <laughs> <laughs> well, fighting the good fight. As always. All right. Um, did you want to start with you? You start episode one. Sure. Uh, episode one is called Playback Payback. Um, so it's just pretty much an intro to the characters. We get to meet everyone, I believe. Actually, I think we don't meet Muldoon in this episode. But uh, so what it is is the aliens are friends with these three kids. Um, their secret hideout seems to be an old arcade, um, arcade area. And it's kind of like they're setting up a VR system where they're doing fake battle scenes to send back to Emperor Bog to say, yeah, we're taking over if it's just taking a little bit longer, but we got it under control, when really they're not doing anything to their flings. They're just hanging out, playing video games, and eating a bunch of food. So, yeah, it's pretty much just uh, them keeping up that scheme going throughout the whole episode. 
kind of seems like their thing that they're doing like throughout the season. You know, the the whole their whole concept is like they were supposed to come here to conquer, and then they liked Earth, and so they're like not going to conquer, but they still have to fool their their leader into thinking that. Yeah. So something I did find very interesting with this because I don't remember him being in it. I remember watching it. I don't know on what, and I don't think I watched much of it. But uh, Rob Paulson is in this, which I think is one of the shining points to this whole series. Is that Muldoon? No, that's one of the aliens, and he plays the blonde hair kid. He's Pinky in the Brain, oh, among yeah. other things. But uh, Muldoon, he's someone famous too because he's he's that typical alien hunter voice actor. I wish I knew his name. I know. Name. Yeah, I know you're talking about. I forget his real name too, but his voice is so recognizable. Yeah, he's, he's like the. Rockwell Files kind of guy. Isn't he like like back back in the day, maybe it was like eighties or nineties, they had that show Unsolved Mysteries and I think he's like the host of that or something like Yeah. Yeah. So in this episode we meet Emperor Buck who's really not that intelligent at all. Yeah. Um and then he's got his little sidekick who's a scientist. Of course the scientist is smarter than the Emperor herself and he thinks that the guys the Martians are fooling him, which they really are, but he can't really prove it. Right. Um, the CGI in this is really weird. It's like really shiny, and I don't know how to explain it. It's just it's so many glows, and the, and the textures for the actual earth and ground. It's just weird. Yeah, it's it's a it's a kids show back in two thousand. Who knows when? Actually, you know, what? I got a year on it. Back in two thousand one uh, is when the show first came out. And so, doing computer animation on a kid's show, it's come a long way today, but back in yeah. 2001, before that, what, it was Reboot, and so you're not exactly getting all the right textures and right lighting and, and stuff like that. Yeah. The question for the whole series, why do they yell BKM? Oh my god, I have that in my notes. I was very confused, and I couldn't find an answer to that, because I, you would think it would be B-U-M. Like butt ugly Martians. Yeah. I do not know what BKM stands for. So if anyone can let us know, anyone who's listening, like hit us up on our Twitter. What does BKM stand for? Butt killing Martians. Butt kicking Martians. I don't. Because it's weird. What do you think of the theme song? Um, I think it's bad, but also good at the same time. It gets it, stuck in your head. It does. That's the thing. It's like cheesy, uh, and uh, but you're kind of like, okay, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, because it kind of sounds like a parody of another song, which I can't pick up off the top of my head. But it's like an '80s kind of rocker song. But this one's very poppy, kids. But it's just something the way the lyrics are, it just gets stuck in your head, and it's like, huh. And then yeah. they say BKM in that as well, and it's like, well, what the fuck does that mean? Yeah, they start you with the repetition, like BKM. B, B, K, M. I'm like, okay, still unexplained. Uh, there's a funny uh, comment made in this episode. Um, they mentioned that aliens are everywhere and even in public washrooms for some reason. <laughs> I don't know if they're just hiding. I don't know if they're just hiding out in the washrooms or what's going on, but uh, apparently that's a common spot for uh, aliens to be. And in the fake news report, they say you can always spot an alien. They eat junk food, they hog on the couch, and they make disgusting noises. I think it's at this point they're sitting on the couch at the kid's house and one of them either burps or farts. Yeah, they're doing the exact... They're, like, matching the description. Uh, do you have any points you want to pick out for this episode? Yeah. So, actually, Muldoon is in this episode. Yeah. Uh, just re- reading my notes, he definitely is. Uh, okay, so I have to point something out. Did you notice anything about the girl's character model? No. For some reason... If you were to go back and look in the first episode and subsequent episodes, for some reason, they made her models behind rather large. It, it's because I, I first noticed it on one shot and I'm like, isn't this supposed to be like like a kid, like a young person? But compared to mm-hmm. the other other character models, like you said, they have the weird shine to it. And she has these like shiny pink pants, but they gave her like a big butt and it was really weird <laughs> and, and kind of like like you couldn't once you notice it, you're just like, well, that's what I'm looking at now. Where you go. <laughs> She's got some junk in the truck. She does. It's pretty freaky. Uh, I love my my notes. I have like everyone is ugly, which is <laughs> yeah. There's no denying that. 
Yeah, at first I was thinking, like, is this kind of inspired by Ninja Turtles just because of, like, yeah, there's only three, but they're all, like, wearing different colors. Like you said, they're trying, they're pretending to conquer Earth. The whole thing is the scientist uh, who works with the leader, I believe his name is Damage. Um, Yeah. Yeah, he suspects something, and he try, he's trying to convince the the leader that there is something up. So he sends down a, uh, a, a spy robot. It's more like a battle robot, because that thing is huge. It's not, it's not yeah, being they, stealth. They call, it, call it the alien hunter, or something like that, along those lines? Um, I'm not or sure. Alien bounty hunter or some, something. Oh, that was, yeah, that was like later on. It's like a different, it was like a hybrid between like some Martian and robot. Yeah, which I didn't realize when watching, that's in the last episode. I didn't realize that's supposed to be the robot from the first episode because yeah, the first one is all robot. And then this guy is part alien, part forearm robot with tank yeah. art, tank legs, I think. Yeah, like, I, think I didn't clue in at all into infinite or something yeah yeah um so yeah robot comes down i believe muldoon like is able to track it somehow and the robot goes straight to the the kid's home which by the way side story um it's like the first time the human kid mike is able to stay home alone with his parents and he has his friends over but he doesn't want the the martians there because you know they're martians something might happen like he suspects something bad will happen and it does. The the spy robot comes. He blows a hole in, or you can't even call it a hole. Blows away the whole wall, um, and somehow no one dies. Um, oh, man, the house is still standing. Yeah, right. Like, come on. There's got there. There would be a support beam like in the middle of that huge like wall that's missing. And uh, yeah, they they get into a big fight. Got my notes that says girl has weirdly large butt. <laughs> um. So they. Beat up the robot. I think Muldoon gets like thrown in a dumpster, and uh, they, without thinking, they beat the robot and they put it. They decide to just like put it in Muldoon's truck because they're like he'll know what to do with it. Yeah. Um, but then it becomes bad because the robot's going to escape and and send a report back to the leader, and so they have to go back and get the robot. Um. The kids are on hoverboards. The Martians are on their hover bikes, and uh, I think when the robot comes back, he's like they it's initiated a full battle mode, which uh, I don't think it was that much different. I think. No, oh, I think his eyes went red. Oh, okay, and then we get what I call it was it was like the kind of a combo of like inspired by Power Rangers and maybe Captain Planet, just like. Um, when they power up, they do their BKM, whatever that means, and they they like raise their their arms to the sky, and like this beam shoots out of their wrist, and then that all it amounts to is them like getting into these, or they, they no, they don't get into them. This these giant robot suits form around them, and and then they're like, yeah, we're in power of we're in battle mode themselves. They fight the robot. Oh, uh, their catchphrase, like, after they, they transform into their suits, they're like, let's get ugly. That goes down in the books is one of the great lines, like, uh, Jossum from uh, <laughs> Street Sharks. Yeah. All right. I guess theirs would have been Shark Attack. That one works, too. Yeah, Jossum works. Yeah. So they beat the robots, and they their plan is to put another fake report into the robot to send it back. Uh, I thought it was funny that... It, Advanced Martian tech still uses uh, CD Jeez. ROMs. <laughs> yep. And I'm like, that technology is never going to go away. They let the robot go, but then Muldoon is like hindering the robot's escape. Um, but he ultimately gets knocked out and his memory erased. And yeah, and then the leader gets the report. We get a nice wrap up with uh, them sort of fixing um, the wall on Mikey's house. But uh, they forget to put it in the window. It's just a wall. Yeah, because his mom's like, honey, where'd the window go? Like, how do you explain yeah, that? No. <laughs> it's like, uh, mom, um, they don't really know. Uh, kind of just got up and walked away. That's space time frame of some sort. Don't know the year, but they drive hover cars, so anything's possible. 
Or he's like, you know, I'm a, I was looking up YouTube videos on uh, just, you know, housing construction, and I just patched up that window. I was like, nah, it needs to be a whole wall. Did you know back in my time there was a coronavirus and they could come through the window, so I figured we should get rid of that window. That's right, no windows. <laughs> um, that's all I got for episode one. Do you got anything? Uh, one last thing. Uh, when they put the robot into Muldoon's van, uh, the fake note reads something along the lines of, um, I've took care of those aliens. Don't worry about it. Uh, just leave the kids alone. Bye. Yeah, and I think it also says, like, I give up or something. Yeah, I give up. I took care of those three little aliens. Uh, leave the kids alone. Bye. Yeah, exactly. It's like, oh, okay. Sure, I'll, I'll, I'll believe that. And Muldoon is, has such a big head that he's like, oh, yeah, he gave up when he messed with me. I'm so good. So, yeah, I think that brings us on to episode number seven, The Big Bang Theory. You want to yes. give a little rundown on this one? All right. So, Martian and, and the kids, or Martians and the kids are playing... Uh, sort of VR games. It's like a pro- projector-based VR games. Kind of cool idea, actually. So you don't have to have the glasses. Mike is supposed to be doing his homework, but he's not because he's going to have the robot dog do it for him. I don't know if we saw the robot dog in episode one. Do you remember? Uh, yes, he was. Okay, so they have they have a kind of this... L- I mean, it's the other sidekick like the the martian sidekicks are the kids but then also we get the robot dog sidekick um who's probably one of the nicer looking characters yeah i would say so it, it, his lighting and texture are decent because i mean he looks like a metal robot so it's okay for him to be all unnaturally shiny so this episode it deals mainly with the dog the muldoon actually sees the dog with mike and automatically he's like, it's an alien, even though it's a robot dog. And I, f- side note, I don't think it would be too weird to see a robot dog in a, a f- kind of semi-futuristic world where they got hover bikes and stuff, or hoverboards. Yeah, I, I, thought, mean. That, I thought that would be the least weird thing to see in this yeah. area. Yeah, and he automatically is like, alien, and captures it. Um, yeah, so dog gets captured. I don't think it has a name. I think they just call it dog. Yeah, yeah, and he gets taken to a lab where the science, the lead scientist, there plans on actually dissecting it. And I don't, I guess you, you couldn't really call it dissecting. It's more like dismantling since he's a robot. Yeah, uh, yeah, and then the Martians uh, are luckily able to track down the dog. And they track it to like a place that's in the middle of nowhere, and it's actually an underground base. Um, they find a secret entrance, and. Um, the kids are also with them. It's probably not a good idea. It seems kind of unsafe to take kids to a secret military base, but whatever. They're Martians. They don't care. Dog, uh, unfortunately, gets split into like two pieces. They rip off his head and then they put him in two places. And and so the, the aliens and the kids have to split up into two teams, but um, they're kind of like mixed teams, not aliens and kids split up. Um, they, they find Dog. He is restored. And then the scientist actually wants to, like, kill the kids or keep them locked up. I don't know what his plan is because they'd seen too much. So he, he didn't want to let them leave. But Muldoon, um, Muldoon, Muldoon's actually a good guy. He's not he's not a, a bad guy. He wants the kids to be let go. The ki- uh, Then the plot gets a little crazier because they, um, I think his name's Cedric. I don't know. The, the other kid releases this alien he finds locked up and then turns out, like, oh, you shouldn't have released that alien because he, his... A body, when it comes in contact with Earth's atmosphere, he'll just explode and completely nuke that the planet. When this happens, the Martians actually escape. But then upon realizing what they've released, they have to go back. They get captured. They get powered up. Um, start beating up these robot guards. And then I believe they, they're able to get the alien. And they send him to someplace safe. They actually send him to Bog, which I thought was funny. Yeah. But that is the general consensus. What are your notes, good sir? Uh, so something starting off the episode, the projector that runs the game, it looks like a 1980s home video recorder. Yeah, it's like a big-ass, bulky like home camcorder that you'd use. Yeah, so I thought huge. that was kind of funny. <laughs> I'm not sure why it would look like that in the modern day with you know hover cars. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> point when uh, Stoke Muldoon is driving his van, did you catch on his, uh, apparently he has his own theme song? I know he's got the internet 
TV show, yes. but he's got his own theme song that he sings to himself. I loved it, and I was like, his singing is so awkward, but uh, it was kind of perfect. It's just showing off his personality that he like he thinks he's so great. And he, he has his own theme song, and he thinks his theme song is so great. Yeah, because you know he's like the shining star that everyone loves, or at least that's what he thinks. Yeah, he thinks he's like gift to humanity and saving the world all, all the time. And then once they're in the base, um, they split up into the two teams to uh, rescue Dog. Um, the part where they get stuck on the bridge, I believe it is. Yes. And they're like, okay, what's what's the plan now? And I don't know the leader's name of the aliens or Martians. I... But his line is, here's the plan. There is no plan. <laughs> and I think he just shoots shoots the bridge and hopes for the best. Yeah. So I thought that was kind of kind of funny. Did you also know that? Or, re- or see that the aliens like to do headbutts a lot as attacks. Yeah, I, I I didn't notice that they did it a lot, but I have it in my notes that apparently headbutting a robot makes it explode. Yeah, because in this episode alone, they did, I think, two or three headbutt attacks. And they one of them was to the door to open the door. Oh, yeah, I remember that. So, I don't know why they, they use their head. I know it's big and bulky, but uh, it wouldn't be my first go-to being a highly intelligent breed of alien. I thought that was weird because, yeah, you have your advanced weaponry, your wrist guns and stuff, but headbutt. Yeah. Right? And at one point when the scientist says, uh, I think it's two of the kids locked up in the tanks with the, I think the other alien's called a night, night chup or something. Night up? Uh, night chup? Nichum? Nichup? I don't know. Something like that. Yeah. Um, the scientist actually threatens to cut the kids in half if they don't behave. Yeah, that was dark. Which I thought was a little drastic. Yeah, a little bit extreme. Yeah, just, just a little bit. Um, and at one point, I think it's Muldoon that says it. Um, Note to file, Martians are lousy liars. <laughs> so yeah. trying to get out of the situation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's really all I, I picked up on that episode. I, I like in like old movies and old shows um, that like slow motion. So they, they have the moment where they do like a slow motion action role. It's like they, they're pretending to oh, surrender. Yeah. But then, like, their leader does, like, this slow motion action roll and, and shoots. But it's, like, back then, slow motion is just literally slowing down the frame rate. So it looks kind of choppy when you're doing it. Got a good old Max Payne. Yeah, yeah. Not not as not as smooth as that, but still kind of similar. Not as dynamic either. All the fight scenes are, you know, one, two hits, and you're done. Yeah, it's a lot of clunky. It's, it's just, like, knocking some character model over and it's like did it um although i believe we got to see which uh you know you you see it in the the intro the intro song it's the one it's the robot spin they they're in their bk bkm form and they i think it's the yellow guy he did this kind of like spin attack and knocked over like three robots oh yeah i think so yeah because uh, they're cornered i think cornered down somewhere yeah um, okay, so I was under the impression, you know, you know, they're talking about the alien, the Nichim or Nichim, whatever it is, that like, oh, it's its body. If you expose it to Earth's atmosphere, it will blow up. And then they got to the surface, and I was like, are they going to do something about this? Um, and then the Martians are like, here, kids, take the alien. And I'm like, okay, take here, take this nuke, <laughs> while we deal with this situation. And then they yeah. sent it to the leader, like. Yeah, because he uh, they sent it to the scientists, and he's like, "Well, you guys are always sending us stuff, so we want to send you something back." And he's all excited. He's like, "Yeah, it should be there right about now." And he looks over, and she's like, "Oh shit!" Seriously, like, okay. Um, not only are you gonna, yeah, yeah, Damage is not exactly a good guy, and so is the leader, but you're gonna kill like all the other Martians and stuff potentially. Also, you know. What alien this is? Wouldn't that mean that you could send it to its home planet or something? Yeah, because apparently, apparently, it um, once it hits the atmosphere, it ex- expands to the point where it blows up, and it's so powerful when it blows up, it'll blow up Earth plus all the planets around it. Yeah, basically. yeah, that's that is extreme. Also, I feel like that plot was kind of just tacked on. Like, I thought the whole saving was, the robot was. Like, was it was like two episodes put together. Yeah, it, it felt kind of weird because you could have made a whole episode about just like saving the robot dog, and I'm 
sure you could just like pad in some fights and that would have been enough. Which is weird because when they do save him because his head's decapitated from his body, all they do is screw it on. They only attach the wires. They just <laughs> pop the head on and good to go. I noticed that too and automatically he was like totally fine. And like, don't you have some connecting to do? I'm like, nope. Nah, it just connects itself. Yeah, good to go. Perfect. Um, yeah, that's all I got for this episode. Which brings us to episode 13. Bog's not so dumb, but really he is. Uh, <laughs> so this one starts out with the blue alien who's working on a new invention for the team. Um, BKM Ultra. Yeah. Which I saw a preview of this on because we watched. I know I did. I watched all the episodes on YouTube. So mm. I saw a preview of what the new suits look like. Kind of yeah. looks like they improved in animation style. So that's kind of interesting. Oh, cool. Um, but of course, the invention does not work. But at the same time, it uh, it destroys their original BKM, BKM mode. So that leaves them pretty much helpless if they get attacked. Um, there's a bar scene for some random reason where we meet some other aliens, which are a lot uglier looking than all the other characters. <laughs> um, there's a snitch in there that tells Bog that what the aliens are doing is um, they're just fooling him. It's all fake. They're not actually taking over Earth. But, yeah. you know, it's true. So he finally starts to send out some of his team to attack them. They fight them off for a bit, send them back. And then at one point, he sends an infinite, it's a newest invention by the scientists, to yep. take care of the guys. And uh, they still don't have their BKM fixed yet. I think they get it fixed just at the end of the episode, which is really weird um, because it's not a two-part episode. But I found this episode ends very randomly because I don't think they even get to finish off the fight. No, yeah. Actually, they get the part, but one of the other Martians shoots it in the air and destroys it, I think, or makes it useless. And then the Infinite's uh, tracking them down, you know, attacking them, and then the episode ends. This is where it's kind of confusing, because I don't know if it was meant to be a two-part episode. I don't know if this is actually the end of season one, and that's how they want to set up season two. Because looking it up, there's a lot of different answers and no defined <gasps> single answer, which does not make sense at all but I've it, is noticed, what it is i guess i've noticed that a lot about shows these shows we've been watching that m- multiple sources are stating different things about like when a season ended and it's like I, why are there multiple answers to this <laughs> yeah yes yeah, some other little f- small facts um one of the girls in the bar uh comes down to earth to get the guys the heads up that uh emperor bog is onto them so I don't know if she's in any of the other episodes or if it's the first time that they ever meet her. Uh, the guys love her for whatever reason. <laughs> um, I'm not sure if she has the same characteristic as the other girl you were saying. I'm not sure if she's got junk in the trunk. I didn't really notice. Um, I didn't notice maybe, it's, maybe it's a reoccurring thing with the female characters. We also have Muldoon in this episode. Um, and he's kind of helping out the aliens because he gives the kids the missing piece that they need. But the kids are also fooling him because they're pretending to be, was it Junior Space Rangers or something like that? Yeah, to get like a part from him. Uh, one line I did find weird, um, the aliens say, uh, quick hop on your hoverboards to the kids so they can escape. Mm-hmm. When the whole time they're on the hoverboards already and they never got off their hoverboards in the first place. <laughs> yeah. Like, what? Because they just, got, they just got back from delivering the part, so they're still on the hoverboard. And then the part gets destroyed, and then the aliens are like, Hurry up, get on your hoverboards and escape. And they're just standing there, hovering. Something I did notice, too. Um, apparently, the dog stores EMP bombs in his back at all point in times. Yeah. Like, oh, he's got weapons. And I don't know if they're, like, tiny or if he carries one at a time, if he produces them himself. It's kind of different. But when the lady's getting ready to leave, she the dog barks at her. So she gives him a goodbye kiss. And then all the Martians start barking at her. <laughs> So I guess that's kind of like a love interest for all of them? I guess so, yeah. I would I would assume so. Other than that, the episode ends really randomly, and Infinite's a mixture of an alien and a robot, which doesn't really make sense, because he's the original robot from episode one, who was all robot. Android. So, I'm not sure if there's a character in between the episodes that gets destroyed, and then they patch them together with the original robot, or what goes on there, but... 
Yeah, because usually that kind of form you would start out with more organic and then they add on the parts. So that's kind of yeah, weird. Yeah. So uh, I thought it was kind of a Star Wars reference when they're at the um, cantina, you know, kind of like the yeah, yeah. most Eisley um, cantina. Apparently that snitch alien owes Bog money. Uh, I have it in my notes. I called this snitch dick hands because he looked like he had dick hands. Yeah. <laughs> uh. <laughs> uh, because it was like he he only had like a two prong kind of hand, but one was like significant. One prong was significantly longer than the other. Yeah, yeah. And his character model was really unappealing looking. He just kind of looked like poop. <laughs> yeah, it was the color of it, and then he had his face was one way, and then his back of his head looked like it was just sculpted on, and like it was missing texture or something. Yeah, because his face was all bumpy, and then the back of his head was smooth. <laughs> so I don't know if his hair got deleted in the animation progress, progress or what? But yeah, you're like, what were you going for here? Say, so yeah, Muldoon is also really, like we said, he's like very arrogant and vain, and uh, simply saying that you're like a big fan of his and part of this like fan club is all you need to for him to give you this like super advanced technological part. I thought it was funny though. They like did all this work to get it. And then when they got to the Martians and like threw it to them, it just got shot and broke. Yeah. <laughs> so, so that whole, that whole arc right there was kind of for nothing. Um, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure in like another episode, they did meet that female alien. Otherwise, why would she give a damn about like going to earth and like warning them? And I think she was like them. She was like a female Martian. Oh, so they they there's there's episode, you know, Bog isn't really is no longer falling for their tricks, but they still continue to try to like convince him that they were taken over to Earth. So they straight up like faked killing the kids, which was like damn. <laughs> yeah, with their green screen and all that. Yeah, they got like vaporized, but it was all like fake. Um, and then he he was like, oh okay, well good work, but then he actually didn't fall for it. Muldoon is some. I mean, he's got his alien tracker, so whenever anything happens. He was, he was able to track that, like, alien battle. Um, which is, essentially, you got Martians fighting Martians. So you said that was an EMP. I wasn't sure if it was an EMP or some kind of blinding thing, but... I, like, yeah, I, I had, they call it an EMP. Okay, I thought it was, like, some kind of solar flare thing they got going on, but it was that easy. They, they did that, and then they didn't even have a real fight scene, because it just... They did the EMP... And then it shows one of the aliens kicking towards the screen, and then they they cut to like, oh, the aliens are beat, and they're not even actually like tied down or restrained or anything. They just have them in the teleporter ready to send back. Oh yeah, they they try. I thought it was funny that they're like, yeah, we we we're sending your your men back um, in a gesture of good faith, and so that you'll forgive us, or I don't know. And then Bog's still not falling for it. And then, like you said, that, that hybrid robot alien thing, Infinite, comes, and they have a big battle. It's mostly just laser battle, though. No one's really doing any crazy fighting, like laser on laser action. Yeah, everything goes to crap at the end. Um, Bog comes to Earth. The, the Martians have been captured by Infinite. This invasion is beginning. I thought it was kind of funny, though. This idea of eva- or, uh, invasion is actually only, like, like five, it looks like five guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Small army, cutbacks. Yeah, right. Where, where's the military? You know, I think if I were the kids, who I don't think I don't think the kids are captured at that point. Um, I'd be like, hey, military or or someone in authority, you should probably see what's going on here and not just rely on these three captured Martians to save the day. But yeah, at that point, it's like that's how, like you said, you're not sure if it's a two-parter, and I'm not sure either. This kind of does seem to me though like a season ender, just because of like how you know it ends pretty bad, and and it makes you want to be like, all right, I gotta see what happens in the next season to you know see if this gets resolved. But yeah, that is the end of that episode. Something else I thought was funny because at one point the Martians tell the kids to get to safety, so they're driving away on their hoverboards, and then. And Muldoon's coming towards the alien Martians, and uh, they pull up to him and it's like, "Hey, what's going on?" And he's like, "Oh, got business to take care of." And they're like, "Well, can we come along?" And he's like, "No, it's too risky." So they attach herself to the back of his truck. Uh, I'm not sure if you've seen the layout of his truck. It's got like smokestacks on the back corners. Yeah. Uh, the girl character is holding on to the smokestack. Ow. 
Yeah, when that you would like, hurt. Yeah, you'd burn your skin off or something. <laughs> yeah, that would be very painful. Why are you doing that? Stop doing that. But yeah, the the fight scene with Infinite's pretty pretty basic. Um, at one point, the Martians are hiding behind uh, rocks, and he shoots his laser. The rocks blow up. Then they're time they're hiding behind their set of rocks, and he just picks up the rocks and says, "Found you, pretty much." Yeah. And that's. <laughs> Because this whole this whole episode is based around them not having their BKM power at all, so they can't really do much other than use their wrist lasers. And, and no no headbutting apparently that would be too much. No, apparently the headbutting was called off for this fight. Can't find it in the animation budget. Nope. So th- you know this is supposed to be a month of like things we hated, and I remember watching the show back in the day, and I I wouldn't say I hated it, but I did not think much of it. Um, it was just like this is on, and even though there's nothing else to watch, I'm not really feeling it. But now, upon you know looking back and revisiting, it's not that bad. No, it's not. It's not great by any means. It's very tall. You can tolerate it. It's got some good voice acting behind it. So it does. And it's not. It's for the time being. It's not the worst animation. It's choppy and whatnot. But for what it was back then. You know, you kind of kind of get a slide for it, but oh yeah, it's definitely m- much worse. <laughs> oh yeah, we know much worse. We won't discuss it ever again. Um, yep. But yeah, it's not a horrible thing. It's not something that would be on my go-to list to revisit anytime soon. But I am curious to watch some episodes with the ultra mode and see what that's all about. Um, yep. but, figure yeah, figure that out. <laughs> May figure out what BKM stands for at some point. Probably not, but one, maybe one we day. do a little more research. Also, did you notice the one character's uh, name is almost like a, a play on Bebop? It's like Bebop. Oh, yeah. You know, I made the connection that kind of seems ni- Ninja Turtle-y with just yeah. their names and stuff. But, yeah, I can see it. Bebop, come on. Bebop. Yeah. But yeah, with that being said, it's definitely not a horrible cartoon. It's not something I would recommend going out to see. There's a lot of other things that are much better for the time period, but it's definitely not on the bottom of the list. I yeah, if yeah, I'm not sure how to recommend this other than like general curiosity. That that would be about it. Yeah, if you're going for like watching all the old C A C G I cartoons, definitely it'd be on the list. Um it might be in the top 10, depending, because there are some really bad CGI cartoons out there. Uh, yeah, I would say if you're like if you're tracking the progress of computer animated TV shows, you you know you'd watch reboot and then watch this and then whatever is top tier right now on TV. I don't know what it, for kids shows. I know there's a lot. I think yeah. if, uh, they got like today. I think the last thing I actually checked out was like. Muppet babies are are now they're no longer two two D animation they're they're three D. Yeah. Have you watched yeah, that? Abby watches it. Yeah, they're yeah, kind of like it. They're textured. They're re- they're really good textured in my opinion. Yes, yeah, especially animal. Yes, sometimes when I'm he's just got, his he's got hair that right. layered fur. Yeah. Yeah, he's got a layered fur, and then Fozzie, when I look at him, I'm like, he looks soft. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Muppet Babies would definitely be up there, and I think one I would have to put up there would be Beast Wars. Yeah, definitely. And especially for the fight scenes, because it's much more detailed as well. To go through a list and get our top ten. Yeah. Do you have your phone on you? No, I do not. Oh, okay. Well, for for future reference, I'm gonna send you this this picture. I got it. I got a screen capture of that girl's butt, like literally out of episode one. And so check it out when you get the chance. And you'll okay. see exactly what I was talking about. It's very weird. <laughs> uh, uh, I was like, I have yes. to find this and show people what the heck they were doing. And this is what Rob's doing, folks. He's looking at CGI butts. Just don't that's, judge them. Just that's let, right. Let it be. They they knew where to put the budget in the show towards. I think the budget probably went to Rob Paulson for voice acting, but that's besides the point. Yep. Someone in the animation room. His rates be cheap. <laughs> Someone storyboarding was like, make that ass bigger, please. <laughs> See, you know, if you want to go with this whole thing right here, on your phone right now, type in, I think it's uh, Tripping the Rift. It's a CGI cartoon. Boy, oh boy. 
heard of that. That is one messed up space alien sex robot TV show thing. <gasps> oh my god. I, I remember this. Wasn't this on like sci-fi channel or something or sci-fi or out swim or, or something adult related oh my god that woman that woman's character model <laughs> yep okay yeah really makes you wonder yeah it's clear what they're going for <laughs> that's funny oh yeah there's there's a lot of adult humor in that one yeah it looks it looks like the whole thing is based around that huh yeah it is. definitely is and i think there's a clan note too I think there's a killer clown, maybe. Oh, I don't, know. I don't know. It's been forever. Yep. Uh, any anything, anything else? No, I think that's it for me. You wanna you wanna plug some? Well, you know we're we're doing that good battle to get rid of the coronavirus, taking it one day at a time, folks. Uh, if you have any toilet paper, you can send it to us via Twitter. Uh, <laughs> we can always stock up on it. Um, but yeah, just uh, follow me on Twitter at Typhonstein and check out the Facebook page, Illustrate Mine at Brian Typhair. You can find my link tree to all the other good sites. And yeah, hopefully going to get back on the routine of doing r- movie reviews and more game videos because kind of been hit and miss lately the last couple weeks. Yeah, uh, I get that. Um, but, you know, get the motivation, we'll jump back on it. I mean, no one, no one could be consistent all the time and stay motivated yeah if you want to follow us we're we're on twitter we're we're coming up on 250 followers very very grateful to all the people we've interacted and um been able to uh meet and get to know we also have our youtube i unfortunately haven't been too consistent with that either trying trying to get back on that as well and uh yeah just wash your hands people (laughs) yeah that's that's weird why does a virus that's gone, like, goes through human contact result in, hey, we need to clean our ass? It just makes me wonder, are you not wiping your, your ass or cleaning your hands after you wipe, like, beforehand? Like, what's going on here, people? See, my theory about that is this this is panic buying. And, and then people who started buying up toilet paper, these are people who have, I don't know, watched too much Walking Dead or, like, have this idea of the end of the world that... We're no longer going to have like running water and toilets maybe. And so they just, I know, get toilet paper. I, who knows what in the end of the world if we're going to have toilet paper. I don't know. It's, it doesn't make sense, but I, it's panic buying. Yeah, it's a little crazy. Uh, seeing that it's a basic, it's kind of like a basic flu. Sure, some people do have breathing issues because I guess the spores have spikes on them. So they go for your lungs and if they build up enough, that's when you get breathing issues. But as long as you stay hydrated and sanitize your hands and keep clean, you'll be fine. Just relax and don't overdo it. Just take it easy and wait for all of this to blow over. And we'll sit at the window and we'll have a drink. <laughs> I was wondering if you were going to catch that. <laughs> oh, I caught it. Oh, yeah. <sighs> all right. Well, that is episode... Oh, my God. Is this episode seven? Six? Seven? I think it's seven. Oh man, we're doing it. We're, we we've been. I'm proud of us. We've been really consistent. How the hell are we gonna keep track when it's up in the fifties? Can't keep track before it hits ten. Yeah, we can do it. Well, I got nothing else, and thank you guys for watching or listening. Thank you. <laughs> Wait, we got video now. Sweet. Oh, yeah, we're. Anyways, as he's as he said, thank you for listening. Uh, Stay safe. Um, clean your butt, I guess. Um, don't buy all the toilet paper, please. S- save some for the rest of us. And, you know, us being dads, save some goddamn baby wipes, please. Just come on, please. Yes, we need those, please. <laughs> so, so until next time, I hope you guys all uh, have fun in this pandemic state crap. Yeah, good luck. Yep, when in doubt, go to Greenland. <laughs>